of life is to the day that I die. Well, some folks like horses, cats, or dogs. Me, I like fishing with a rod and fly. Yes, fishing is favorite pastime of mine. If I couldn't do it, I think I would cry. Well, life is good when I'm wading a river. It gets even better when I cast a fly. If I catch trout, it don't really matter. It's fun just to be here and give it a try. Spring has thawed out the long, bitter winter. The water is clear and the skies are blue. I'm standing in the middle of the Delaware River. Might even catch and release one or two. Stoneflies and caddis in the ripples are plenty. Mayflies according on fragrant breeze. The cedar wax wings come down from the heavens. Wait for their dinner up in the pine trees. A trout is rising in the far eddy. I make a false cast, then take my aim. If he takes the fly, I'd feel so much better. And if he doesn't, I'll feel no shame. The water is cold and my waders leap. It's raining now on my favorite stream. I'll bear it all just to fish with a feather. So when I sleep, I will have a sweet dream. Life is good when I'm wading a river. It gets even better when I cast a fly. If I catch a trout, it don't really matter. It's fun just to be here and give it a try. Oh, ripples and waves, pools and eddies, trout are rising for the dry fly. The sun is shining down on the valley, hope to be a fly fish to the day that I die. Yes, I hope to be a fly fish to the day that I die. Hi folks, how you doing? I'm just hanging out here with Mako, and uh, <clears throat> like to welcome you to today's show. Today's show is we're going to uh, highlight a couple of things, and one of those things is uh, the Trout in the Classroom project. But first I'd like to show you a videotape um, from the New York State chapter of Trout Unlimited. Trout Unlimited is a national conservation organization dedicated to preserving protecting and restoring trout and salmon habitat across the country. I have a membership form right here and if you would like more information about Trout Unlimited and how to join you could go to tu.org that's the national chapter and you do and you, you go onto their website and do a chapter search and look up New York State and you'll you'll find the Ale Hazard chapter of Trout Unlimited's website where you can join online and right now they're having a special offer where if you join uh, as a new member you know you've never been a member before or whatever um, it's 1750 and uh, most of that money comes right back to our local chapter so I'd like you to watch this film and uh, consider joining Trotted Limited <laughs> A remote pond in the Adirondack Park. A classic Catskill stream. Lake Ontario, the Finger Lakes, and their many tributaries. 
the Hudson and Delaware River drainages. All of these scenes are part of New York State's great fishing heritage. New York State is somewhat unusual in that there is a wide variety of fishing habitat available within a few hours drive of a major metropolitan center. Many acres of excellent trout water in fact have been created through the development of the system of reservoirs that provides New York City with drinking water. In recent years however Population growth and land development has sometimes limited public access to certain streams. Acid rain deposition continues to plague our mountain lakes and ponds. Poor farming practices have contributed to siltation and stream bank erosion. And toxic contamination, as well as non-point source pollution, is a continuing blight. What can we do to help preserve our precious waters, to maintain and develop fisheries for ourselves and future generations? The New York State Council of Trout Unlimited is addressing this question. Trout Unlimited was founded by a small group of Michigan anglers concerned by the declining quality of trout fishing in that state's Osabo River. From this modest beginning in 1959, the volunteer organization has expanded to a national level with over 400 chapters and 65,000 members nationwide. New York State is currently one of the largest state councils with almost 6,000 members as of September 1989. Let's consider a few examples of what Trout Unlimited has done to help preserve and enhance New York's fishing heritage. Through cold water releases from the Pepacton and Cannonsville reservoirs, the east and west branches, as well as the main stem of the Delaware River, provide some of the finest wild trout habitat in the eastern United States. Trout Unlimited has been instrumental in negotiating adequate water releases and is continuing work to refine this release schedule to ensure preservation and growth of this great fishery. The New York State Council is also actively fighting proposals to chlorinate portions of the Groton watershed that are inhabited by trout. Trout Unlimited continues to aid the State Department of Environmental Conservation through recommendations regarding state acquisition of stream easements. The establishment of special regulations fishing areas and the construction of angler parking and access areas. Trout Unlimited has actively supported the concept of ethical fishing, such as limiting one's catch to what will be immediately consumed. The New York State Council has annually sponsored a statewide trout forum so that anglers may gather in a social setting to share information. Trout Magazine is published four times annually by the National Office. It is sent free of charge to all Trout Unlimited members and contains articles on various aspects of trout fishing by well-known authors. old adage states that the whole is only as strong as its individual parts. And this is certainly true of the New York State Council of Trout Unlimited. Much of Trout Unlimited's mission statewide is carried out at the local level by individual Trout Unlimited chapters. Although there is some variation from chapter to chapter, most meet on a once or twice monthly basis. Many chapter meetings feature programs of general interest, such as a guest speaker, a video or slide presentation, 
or a live demonstration. Trout Unlimited chapters have been involved in many aspects of habitat development and maintenance. Green belting, or limiting traffic and cultivation along each bank of a stream, is an effective means of reducing bank erosion. Green belting is often accompanied by the planting of willows or similar well-rooted plants that will help stabilize the stream bank. Sometimes the placement of a more extensive structure, such as a pool digger, is necessary to provide oxygenation and cover for trout. Stream cleanups are an excellent way for a chapter to improve the aesthetic quality of a fishery. Needless to say, the cleanups go a long way to enhance the image of fishermen with respect to local landowners. Trout Unlimited chapters play an important role in the community by providing information on local environmental issues and by sponsoring clinics on various aspects of angling, such as rod building or fly tying. Many chapters work directly with local school systems and with youth groups such as the Boy Scouts and 4-H. Trout Unlimited is firmly committed to working with young people. If we can instill a sense of pride and responsibility for the environment in successive generations of fishermen, we can ensure the perpetuation of high quality sport fishing. Can you help preserve New York's fishing heritage? It's easy. If you are currently a Trout Unlimited member, don't be a deadhead. Get involved. Help out with your chapter's banquet. Help out with raffles and other fundraisers. Take part in community education projects. Get your feet wet with a stream cleanup. Teach a kid to fish, or show up for your club's annual fishing day. If you are not currently a Trout Unlimited member, we hope that this presentation will be an inspiration to join us. Membership in Trout Unlimited can give you access to the latest information concerning equipment, fishing conditions, and fishing techniques that can make you a better fisherman. But the real reward of membership is the knowledge that you're helping to protect and to enhance a fine fishing heritage and to preserve this heritage for future generations. This has been a production of the New York State Council of Trout Unlimited. Hi folks, welcome back. I'd like to now highlight a program that's uh, carried out in the local area with, with uh, contributions from the Ale Hazard chapter of Trot Unlimited. This is one of those things that Trot Unlimited does to make things better, okay? 
in our local community communities and it's called trout in the classroom and what it is is a program where students raise trout eggs in a classroom and in, in a good size aquarium 40 gallon aquarium and they usually get about 200 to 400 eggs and they raise these fish and they feed them and take care of them and change the water and make sure the water temperature is cold we uh, provide the chiller which is used it's a refrigeration unit that keeps the water cold for trout but the kids pretty much take care of the fish and they do some science projects as related to it math projects and and uh, literature also they can write stories and do artwork paintings of their their little fish or whatever so it encompasses all kinds of educational uh, activities now the trout in the classroom locally is uh, pretty much run through BOCES um, we provide chillers to the schools that BOCES works with so if you'd like to get a chiller in your school contact Roger Zilio and uh, he'll set you up with uh, everything you need to know about that but take a look at this this is uh, an interview I did with them a couple years ago about trout in the classroom <laughs> One of the programs we offer is called the Regional Science Center um, and through the Regional Science Center we hope to be able to put an aquarium similar to this one in various classrooms throughout our component schools and uh, the students will be able to monitor the water quality in the tank and then watch the fish grow and then eventually release them into one of our local streams. Um, how does the trout in the classroom meet the uh, uh, standards of the state education for ecology or earth sciences? Does it, does it meet all those requirements? Um, th there's a very easy and quick tie-in between some of the lessons that can be extracted and taught with this sort of material in the New York State standards, both in mathematics and science, um, biology, zoology, ecology, um, there's a, a very natural and easy tie-in to, to be made. It'll also tie in with um, some of our environmental ed programs like the AP biology programs, especially the water quality part. Uh, what age is, uh, uh, does this, uh, does a system like this uh, work with? Is it just uh, sixth grade and up or is it for almost any level yeah the, the regional science center component would be elementary students um, depending on the age level the different environmental quality tests would change uh, some lower level students probably second graders could easily keep track of the temperature of the water and then as you get up into high school they could test for ammonia nitrates nitrites um, pH and various other water quality tests now, um, so, uh, how, how many uh, uh, school districts are you planning on trying to develop the system? At the, at the present time, we've got nine or ten districts that are involved in our regional science center, and we'd like to start by opening, you know, the program up to them, and also under the environmental ed um, section of our program, we've probably got another ten districts there. Great. Um, how many fish uh, did you start with here? Was there? Uh... To the best of our knowledge, we restarted. We started with about 50 newly out of the egg hatched fry. Um, as you can see, they're so mobile. It's it's hard to to actually get an accurate count. But it doesn't look like we've lost much of any. We did start off with a smaller aquarium. And then when it became apparent that our initial effort was going to be, looked like it was going to become successful, we, we upgraded to something that we thought was big enough to handle the quantity, at least for a while, and also visually create an environment that would be very pleasing to help aesthetically support the, uh, the educational and, and, and science benefits that the program might help us. It's um, like you, you talked about releasing it. Uh, 
will the kids actually take the trout out and release them themselves? Is that the plan? The plan would be for the the students to actually hatch the eggs and then monitor the the progress of the fish, and then when they got to a point where they could be released, they would be in, actually involved in releasing the fish into a local stream. We plan to release these probably around April, and then. Um, Shortly after that, we'll clean the tank up and then get some rainbows, and um, we'll raise them and release them in the, when they're grown, and then start the cycle over again with the browns. Now, uh, with, with the programs running through your uh, your office here at Bosey's, um, most of the paperwork for uh, the salmon or the trout eggs and the the other things, all that stuff will be handled through you guys, right? That's so right. That for the, the the school districts, basically, they just have to have the kids monitor the tank for the most part. Right. So it's, so it's easy on that. On that right. Sense. They'll they'll be supplied with the the eggs and the food and, and instructions and take it from there. Great. Um, Another benefit of going through a BOCES program is because it is going through BOCES because it is aligned to the standards. Um, it's a BOCES aidable expense. Um, it's an educational meritorious initiative and we can support those sorts of things. So if a school district wants to send a sixth grade teacher, a high school chemistry teacher, whatever their implementation is, and they need to provide, for example, a, a substitute teacher for half a day to provide the time for that teacher to come up here and to work with their peers and to explore the educational possibilities, that would become an aidable expense. We could actually assist the school district in covering the cost for that substitute teacher. Um, now, um, if, if I was at a school, how would I if I was a teacher and I, if I'm a viewer of my show um, and I see this tape, how would I go about getting one of these systems in my school? Do I contact you, you guys here? All of the all of the members of our regional science center will be um, informed of this program. Um, we plan to start it next September, and they'll automatically be notified. Um, districts that are not involved in the regional science at this point um, could contact me and we might be able to work something out outside of the, the regional science center. The way these sorts of initiatives traditionally work is we would advertise and provide an opportunity for all of the potentially interested parties to come here and explore the possibilities and if they wanted to get involved they could see if what they currently do is a good match and also become aware of what we would expect from them. Because traditionally, we help provide these sorts of resources for them, but in turn, we expect those teachers to, t one, take advantage of the educational materials we would provide, but also enhance and create educational materials themselves, which we then could replicate and share with all other participants, both next year and in the future. So we leverage their, ex their experiences. Tell me a little bit about the ecology of the tank and how it might differ from your tropical fish tank. I know the temperature is cooler, but what, what other water quality needs are there? Well, you know, trout are generally perceived to be an indice of water quality. Um, if trout can survive, the rule of thumb is, is that water system is in pretty good shape. Um, they're sensitive to heat, they're sensitive to uh, nitrogenous compounds, uh, nitrates, nitrates, ammonias. They're sensitive to a whole host of things that unfortunately we find in a lot of our rivers. Um, if we can support an environment of trout, and of course it becomes more of a challenge as they get big and these are growing at an incredible rate. He feeds them too much. Um, <laughs> we're, we're successful. Um, we need to test for those sorts of compounds and make sure that the, those levels are kept at a manageable level. The filter hex has activated carbon and zeolite material in it to absorb ammonia. Um, those need to be replaced when the testing of the water shows that it's appropriate to do so. 
but so far the trout have been very forgiving and it's been easier than I would have anticipated before the fact to raise them. You know, they behave more like piranhas occasionally when we feed them. There's a lot of pricing vigor in that tank. So there you have it, folks. <clears throat> that was uh, a couple of videos from uh, one from the New York State Council of Trout Unlimited, which is the, the main council for the whole state. Uh, and it was also a little video clips I did from up at BOCES with our Trout in the Classroom project. So you can see that Trout Unlimited is <clears throat> working at the grassroots level uh, in many different ways. Uh, we have riverbank cleanups in the spring, in April. Well, we have fly tying classes through the start in January and go through February. We have fly fishing classes. We help sponsor a couple of kids derbies. And we also have done uh, <clears throat> stream improvement projects. And we have other things going on as well. So there's always always something happening there. Our, our banquet is uh, the last Saturday in March. And I'm not sure who the speaker is yet, but it's uh, it's a good time. There's a lot of raffles and things like that. So <coughs> by all means, uh, uh, go try and find some tickets to that event. It's a it's a great uh, event, and it's worth worth every dime. And uh, there's my giant giant stonefly. But uh, anyway, uh, it's. Uh, it, I just wanted to let you know about Trout Unlimited and what, some of the things they do. And uh, it's a non-for-profit, private, uh, you know, public organization dedicated to conserving, protecting, and restoring trout and salmon habitat uh, throughout the country. Walking down Mata River. What do I see? Fish swimming in the water Right by me Turtle on that log Poking up in the sun Ducks feeding in the nanny Looks like a lot of fun Come on now people Won't you listen to me? The river is a beautiful place to be Walking down by the river what do I see? Birds flying in the air High above me The river is a habitat Many creatures call home And if you don't like it Please leave it alone Come on now people Won't you listen to me? The river is a beautiful place to be Come on now people won't you listen to me? The river is a beautiful place to be. Walking down by the river, you can really feel what freedom means and what is real. You can sit and think while you observe all the life that's around us and what it deserves. Come on now, people. Won't you listen to me? The river is a beautiful place to be. But come on now, people. Won't you listen to me? The river is a beautiful place to be. But come on now, people. Won't you listen to me? The river is a beautiful place to be.